case after five days of testimony in the sexual assault case against Bill Cosby. Vernon Odom is live now at the courthouse in Norristown with the latest developments. Vern. Alicia, those are five full days of intense testimony and presentation here at the courthouse in Norristown. Again, the prosecution rested just moments ago. That was their plan. Their contention that the showbiz legend is guilty of aggravated sexual assault of Andrea Constan. The defense will present its case starting on Monday. Day five of the Bill Cosby trial, the day the prosecution planned to rest its case. On the witness stand again, a Cheltenham police detective reading from a decade-old Cosby deposition given in the civil lawsuit filed by his central accuser here, Andrea Constant, back in 05. Under questioning, Cosby admitted he bought seven prescriptions for quaaludes in the 70s and on occasion gave them to women to ease his way to having sex with them. Constant says Cosby plied her with three pills and wine until she became woozy and unable to fend off his advances as she had done twice before when they were alone after fireside dinners. Late this afternoon, in the sworn statement, Cosby said he worried about Constant and her mother possibly trying to embarrass or extort him, so he offered to pay for her graduate school tuition. He said he did not want his wife to find out about his sexual encounters with Andrea Constant. Cosby's PR man spoke briefly with reporters at midday. Mrs. Cosby, uh has been supporting Mr. Cosby for the entire time they've been together for 53 years. Uh, it showed uh, when we had jury selection in Pittsburgh how she was so afraid and because of her love for him to stay in the hotel that he flew back and forth on his plane from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh. Brian, the defense will open its uh, case on Monday morning, the first thing this weekend, the lawyers, tomorrow in fact, the lawyers will be meeting in a private conference with the judge. Bill Cosby will not be here. Still no indication if Bill Cosby will change his mind and take the witness stand. Live at the Montgomery County Courthouse in Norristown, I'm Vernon Odom, Channel 6 Action News. All right, Vernon, thank you. There is now a renewed push to solve a decade-old cold case involving a student at Rowan University. Drivers all over the area will likely see these billboards popping up. They're asking for tips to help track down the people who murdered Donald Farrell back in 2007. There's a $100,000 reward being offered for any information leading to a conviction. Farrell was killed during an apartment mugging on the Glassboro campus. Surveillance from a convenience store shows the suspect, but that suspect was never identified. With Atlantic City's financial issues, Action News has learned the Beach Patrol is taking some cuts. A new contract calls for a longer season with a pay freeze for all but two lifeguards. It also eliminates a bonus previously awarded for perfect attendance. In addition, lifeguards will no longer get pensions. If you're interested in joining the Beach Patrol, by the way, they are looking or holding tryouts on June 18th. Whew, looks so nice down there today, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Lots of people, no doubt, trying to get to the beach, even at this uh, 4 o'clock hour. Happy Happens every Friday just like yeah. that. And let's go live to Matt Pellman. Hey, Matt, how are you? And you don't expect this to go well, do you? Probably not. No, of course not. <laughs> Friday afternoon, a nice Friday afternoon in the summertime. We know that it's going to be a little bit of a mess out there. And indeed, already, Brian and Monica, we have a bunch of issues. Here in the Western Burbs in the West Chester area, 202 southbound side. Nasty crash, one of the vehicles facing sideways there into the barrier. Southbound lanes near Paoli Pike, just one lane's getting by. So coming down from Exton, coming away from Route 100, you're barely moving because of this accident on 202 southbound. Double trouble on the Schuylkill westbound. There's a broken down vehicle near South Street, just four miles per hour approaching that. Then there was a crash near the Conjocan curve that's now gone, but still long backlog, just six miles per hour as you pass. City Avenue. Lincoln Drive, southbound near Wissahickon, there's a broken down vehicle. Boulevard northbound near Mashery, you have a crash there. 95, southbound by the Betsy Ross Bridge, there's a crash. And we're watching this accident on the Ben Franklin Bridge coming into Philadelphia. At the moment, all westbound lanes are blocked as they try and clear the accident. So coming into Philadelphia, you want to use the Walt Whitman. Coming into New Jersey, you want to use the Ben Franklin because we've got lots of shore traffic at the Walt Whitman. Once you get farther along, a little slowing on the AC Expressway approaching the Garden State Parkway, but at this point, 
it doesn't look terrible. Let's grab the iPad, do the commuter report on this very busy Friday afternoon and getting reports of an overturned vehicle crash creating jams in Upper Chichester Delco along 322 Conchester Highway. That also is not your best route this afternoon. Not many of them are. We'll check it again, Brian and Monica, coming up in the next half hour. All right, you weren't lying. No. Thanks, Pat. Next on Action News, an unprecedented gambling bill is making its way through the Pennsylvania legislature right now. If it passes, you can see gaming allowed on websites, at airports, and in bars. And that's not all. We'll break down the potential changes. And a, remove, a moving remembrance for fallen heroes. The Action Cam in Box County today as volunteers set up a massive memorial, one flag at a time. Every Gambling online in airports, bars and restaurants. It's all one step closer to becoming a reality in Pennsylvania. This week, the House of Representatives passed legislation to expand casino style gambling far beyond casinos, a move that has a lot of people talking. It will destroy our communities. State Representative Scott Petrie from Bucks County sits on the gaming committee and tells Action News there's nothing winning about this venture. The state should always be careful about using vices and addictive type behavior to balance the budget. Petrie says the way the bill reads now, it doesn't give towns or municipalities the chance to opt out. Illinois, they required every municipality to be able to say no, we don't want it. You can go elsewhere, it's allowed in the state, but not in my town. We didn't even have the respect to do that for our communities. Here's just some of what the House approved. Anyone with a liquor license can host and operate slot machine style gambling machines. Licensed casinos can apply for a permit to offer gambling online or through an app and also set up gambling areas in airports. The Pennsylvania Lottery would also be able to offer games online and casinos with horse racing tracks could set up slot machines at off-track betting parlors. The House says some of the funds from all of this would go back to local communities, increasing revenue without increasing taxes. If it brings in more business, that's cool. More jobs for people. Places want to have these gambling things, let them itch. Why keep it to the casinos only? But some addiction counselors warn of the dangers of making gambling more visible and more accessible. I think it will increase the number of people addicted to gambling. Because if it is so easy to reach, if it is everywhere, then every person who has at least interest in gambling will use it. Now, this measure still needs approval in the Senate, which passed a narrower gambling bill last month. Monica. All right. Delaware National Guard members are getting ready to deploy overseas. 19 soldiers were the stars at today's departure ceremony at the Smyrna Readiness Center. Friends, family, and the public were there to send them off and thank them for their service. This group will serve at 12, a 12-month 12 tour in Southwest Asia. They're going to six weeks of training at Fort Hood, Texas first. The Major General says this team was handpicked because of their specialized training in the communications field. <laughs> Missing military men and women are being remembered tonight in this touching memorial in Levittown, Bucks County. Volunteers place hundreds of flags in a large diamond shape against a black field here at Falls Township Park. It's to honor MIAs and POWs from Vietnam, Iraq, and more. It seems like every year we get more and more volunteers to help us, and it's incredible just to see that much patriotism and support. Nice gesture. There are other events there this weekend as well. Well, that major reconstruction project that will connect Society Hill to Penn's Landing in Philadelphia officially has the funding to move forward. Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf joined Mayor Jim Kenney to announce that the state and city are working together to pay for the project. It calls for an 11-acre green park deck between Walnut and Chestnut, and it would be built over the top of Interstate 95. The estimated cost of that project, $200. $25 million. The William Penn Foundation is also putting up money for the project by paying for the landscaping on the deck itself. Mm, interesting. All right. Sight. Time right now for a check of that AccuWeather forecast. We have the weekend coming up. Yeah, we sure do. Blue skies to get us started mm. today. Meteorologist Leslie Tyne, all good news here. Yeah, what a sight you just said. Yeah. Take a look at this. Sky 6, taking a look in Cape May where the beach umbrellas are up. If you look right there, you know who that is? Adam Joseph. 
Hmm? Playing hooky? Enjoy <laughs> the weather. I'm just kidding about that, but sky six showing. This is the place to be and actually inland's very nice as well. We've got the return of sunshine. Temperatures back up to more seasonable levels. Philadelphia, 82 degrees. Normal high for this time of the year is 81. Allentown and Reading, 81. Lancaster, 80. You have a land breeze. Not a sea breeze, so on the beaches, nearly as warm as inland. Cape May, 78, and the Atlantic City Airport in Pomona, currently 79. Satellite 6 and Action Radar showing we're in between systems. That low that brought us the clouds off the coast, that has left the region. If you look up across the Great Lakes, so there's a little bit of a spin. That's from a weak disturbance that will be pulling through early tomorrow morning. Could kick off a shower or a thunderstorm in the Poconos and Lehigh Valley. But tonight will be a very comfortable night. A moonlit sky with a full straw. Strawberry moon temperatures a lot warmer than they have been lately. 63 in Philadelphia, Allentown 58, Cape May 64, and Wilmington 61 degrees. Great weather for a Friday night. Now, future tracker showing that upper level disturbance moving through tomorrow morning will bring us some clouds if you're up early, 7:30. Mostly cloudy skies, and again, you see a few blips on the radar: a shower, or thunderstorm across the Lehigh Valley and the Poconos, but it really doesn't last long. By the afternoon, a good amount of sunshine can't rule out the possibility of an ice isolated sprinkle. Most areas though, will be rain free and it is going to get warm tomorrow. So if you're lucky enough to be down the shore tomorrow, it'll be beautiful. Partly sunny 78 degrees in Philadelphia, pleasantly warm 86 degrees. So temperatures about five degrees above normal. Humidity will be in check and the Pocono 78 degrees with a possibility of a morning thunder shower. Future tracker showing this is when things really heat up on Sunday. By 530 in the evening, temperatures well up in the low 90s. The place to be, Cape May County, you get that wind off the bay. Wildwood will be 75 degrees. It's going to feel a lot better there. So the four day at four showing tomorrow, partly sunny, warmer, but really not all that bad with a high of 86 degrees. Sunday, though, is when you will feel the heat and the humidity. The high soaring up to 94. Monday, it gets more muggy, tying the record high of 95 degrees. It looks like Tuesday will be the peak of the heat up to 96 degrees, a new record. You factor in the humidity, though, it'll feel like 100 degrees. Ooh. So you really do have to take that seriously. That's dangerous heat, especially since we are not used to it All since right. it's been so cool lately. All right. Thank you so much, Cecily. Thanks, Cecily. It's still ahead here on Action News today, a major graduation mix-up. Families from near and far were left out of a Delaware graduation, even though they had tickets. Hear from some distraught parents and school leaders coming up. And in Freebie Friday, everything from free coffee to free iced tea to a free pet. We'll show you how to get everything 100% off. Look, that little guy needs a home. We'll tell you all about it coming up and what's the deal. Mm, today, a great day to cool down with a glass of lemonade. Folks are invited to stop by the Ludington Library in Bryn Mawr, Montgomery County, and grab a glass for a good cause. Senator Dalen Leach hosted his annual fundraiser for Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation. Alex Scott, the originator, did live in the 17th Senatorial District before she died in 2004 of cancer, and the Lemonade Stand originally was her idea. Very nice. A group of students in North Philadelphia is celebrating the end of the school year. Dobbin CTE High hosted a party today. Students spent the day outdoors soaking up the sun, listening to music, and of course saying goodbye to friends for the summer. There were even bounce houses for fun. Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney stopped by and spoke to some of the students. This school is just one of several funded by revenue raised by the Philadelphia beverage tax that went into effect earlier this year. Well, after four years of hard work, a group of local students have finally achieved their dream of graduating. The action camp stopped by Hagen Arena at St. Joseph's University. It was a filled room with students from Archbishop Prendergast and Monsignor Bonner, along with their family and friends. And of course, we wish them all good luck to the class of 2017 as you embark on your next adventure. More than 600 students at Delaware Valley Charter High School in Logan had a huge end of the year celebration today. It was a dunk tank for the kids to dunk their teachers and even got some free haircuts. There was food for everyone to enjoy. Delval Charter is in jeopardy of closing its doors for good, so today's event was in many ways a bittersweet one. And still ahead on Action News at 4, it's the interruption infuriating the Internet. You won't believe what one best man decided to do in the middle of his best friend's wedding. Plus, graduation frustration. 24 hours after dozens of family members and friends were denied the chance to see their loved ones get their diplomas, we head back to Delaware to ask why.
Action News continues with meteorologist Adam Joseph, Alicia Vitarelli, Shari Williams, and Brian Taz. Hello again, 4.30 now, and Action News continues with a riddle. What do Taco Bell, pets, and summer hairstyles have in common? Well, they're all things that you can get for free, but only if you stay tuned. So you'll want to do that. Yeah. Plus, he had one demand, but she had another. Well, that's right. Instead of handing over cash to a would-be robber, an Ohio subway restaurant worker handed over some employment advice. Hear why she challenged him coming up. And if you've ever wondered if you might one day lose your job to a robot, wonder no more. There's a website for that. How the technology predicts whether your occupation is at risk. Straight ahead. But we begin with graduation frustration in the first state. This was the scene in the University of Delaware last night as hundreds of William Penn High School students accepted their diplomas. But this was the scene outside. Many family members and friends locked out of that ceremony, of course, missing their loved one's big moment. Action News reporter Gray Hall went to the Colonial School District to find out what happened. He's live at the high school now. Gray, any answers? Well, Monica, we have heard back from the school district. We have not heard back from the University of Delaware, which hosted this graduation and, according to the district, locked the doors and prevented those parents from attending the ceremony because too many people showed up. Sorry really isn't enough because I waited so long for my mom to see me graduate high school. But, I mean, it's not acceptable at all. And I don't really know what else to say. Makaya Rollins is heartbroken. She says her William Penn High School graduation was ruined after her mom was prevented from seeing the ceremony Thursday night. It could have been anybody else's mom out there, but it was mine. And I don't think that was fair to me. Viewers shared video showing frustrated crowds of family members being locked out of that ceremony. Makaya's mom says she was told the University of Delaware's Bob Carpenter Center, which held the graduation, was filled to capacity. And even though she had a ticket, she would not be allowed in. You wait 12 years for this, 12 long years for just this one day, and you don't get it. You never get this day back. She says she was shattered. She now lives in Georgia and allowed her daughter to stay with relatives in Delaware for several months to finish out the school year. All they have now are pictures of them in tears outside of the graduation and a small clip a relative captured with a cell phone from inside the ceremony. I don't think sorry is enough. The district superintendent says it was out of their control. He says the school gave out 4,800 tickets and the university could seat up to 5,600. He blames the University of Delaware. We had four, 560 graduates. It's probably the biggest high school graduation that they would do. Uh, and they took visuals. They weren't clicking and taking actual numbers. They took a visual perspective and then made that decision based on that. The superintendent says he completely understands why parents are upset and admits there is nothing that can be done to reverse what happened. But he's working to make sure there is not a repeat. Moving forward, we will make sure this doesn't happen again because it's not fair to our community. It's not fair to our students and it's a milestone that you can't get back. All right, so back out live. Obviously, this was a huge mistake. You heard from the superintendent. We are still waiting to hear back from the University of Delaware. When we get a statement from them, we'll bring it right to you. Live in Newcastle, Gray Hall, Channel 6, Action News. Brian? Hi, Gray. Thank you. Police in Philadelphia's West Oak Lane section are looking for the gunman who shot two people in broad daylight today. It happened at the intersection of Broad and Haines Street just before 1 this afternoon. The victims were rushed to the hospital. Police have yet to release any information on their conditions. We're also waiting to hear if they have any suspects or a motive. Local leaders gathered together this morning to talk about what they're calling an explosion of violence in north central Philadelphia. In the last 45 days, they say more than 30 people have been shot and or killed in the neighborhood. State Representative Curtis Thomas says it has reached a crisis proportion. It's not just the violence, it's the lawlessness associated with the violence where folks do not believe that anything is going to happen and that they can do whatever they want to do, whenever and wherever. And I call it now, along with local clergy, Representative uh, Thomas called on community leaders to take responsibility and to demand accountability. Fire investigators are trying to figure out what sparked a smoky blaze in Philadelphia's Port Richmond section. Chopper 6 HD over the 3000 block of Agate Street about two today. You can see firefighters battling what's left of the blaze here on the roof of a row home. At one point, the flames were so intense, smoke could be seen at Penn's Landing three miles away. We are still waiting to hear if anyone was hurt in that fire. 
A sailor in the U.S. Navy was honored today in Wilmington. Delaware Senator Tom Carper hosted this pinning ceremony today for the first enlisted sailor to complete his submarine warfare qualification. Naval Fireman James Erlaw will serve on the USS Delaware, which is currently being constructed in Virginia. Senator Carper spearheaded the effort to get the ship named after Delaware. And of course, congratulations to Erlaw. Terrific. Well, we're in the 80s. It's official now. Feels like yes. summer again. Cecily Tiny joining us. We, we got to break out the sprinkler on the lawn today so the kids oh, could yeah. run through. Oh, that's oh, fun. Totally summer. One of those days you just wanted to be outside. Yeah. I think a lot of people would be happy if we just stayed in the 80s uh, for a while, but yeah. that's not going to happen. Uh -huh. We will be heading into the 90s. But take a look live on Sky 6 at Philadelphia International Airport where we've got blue skies, a few fair weather cumulus bubbling up in the heat of the day, and the temperature 82 degrees, about where we should be for this time of the year. Notice the dew point. It's 49 degrees. That's a very dry air mass. Dew points, though, will be rising through the weekend, as will the temperatures. So your weekend forecast in a nutshell here tomorrow, partly sunny. It'll be warmer, but not oppressive. 86 degrees on Sunday, though, sunny, hot and more humid with a high soaring up to 94 degrees. And we're looking at dangerous heat. Sunday through Tuesday, temperatures in the mid 90s, but the heat index at the peak of the heat wave will be around 100 degrees. So that is getting into the dangerous territory. Definitely do want to take it easy, drink lots of water, find air conditioning. Don't forget about the pets. Try to keep them cool. I'll let you know when the heat wave breaks. Also have details on the shore and the Poconos. Big race weekend in the Poconos coming up yep. in the seven day forecast. All right, Cecily, thank, thank you. you. And of course, uh, with the extreme heat on the way, we encourage you to use our mobile app to stay informed from Tips to staying cool to Storm Tracker 6 Live. The 6ABC app is a free download for your mobile device. It's a murder mystery on the main line that's gone unsolved for nearly 200 years. Now, officials are using some high tech ways to figure out just what happened all that time ago. Action News anchor Rick Williams live in the newsroom this afternoon with the new details on this. Hi, Rick. Hi, Brian. Thank you. We're talking about an area in Malvern called Duffy's Cut, and it's believed to be the site of a massive grave where 57 Irish immigrants were buried just weeks after they arrived in the United States. Well, the remains of seven of those immigrants have been discovered, but the other 50 are still missing. How crews there are now renewing the search for answers 185 years after those immigrants died. Also coming up tonight at 5, the Bidens have a new place to vacation. We'll tell you where the former vice president and his wife have purchased a brand new home. Just some of the stories we are following for you when we see you in just a little bit on Action News at 5. Until then, back to the studio. And Monica, we'll see you in just a bit. Okay, thank you, Rick. Okay. It was a big day for graduates at a high school in Northeast Philadelphia. The class of 2017 for Little Flower Catholic High School got their diplomas today. Don't they look great? The graduation was held on campus of the Holy Family University. And, of course, the gym filled with proud family members who stacked pictures to commemorate this very important occasion. Congratulations. Yep. And still to come here today, kittens, tacos, and coffee. Believe it or not, those are just three of the things that you can get for free if you stick around for Freebie Friday. And will your job be a thing of the past going forward? Just ask this website. Which occupations are reportedly most at risk of being taken over by robots? Uh-oh. Plus, he wanted cash. She wanted him to get a job. So what made this subway worker tell off a would-be robber? Well, she explains. Coming up. The Gary Popper run is a a forensic investigator testified today in the trial of that Massachusetts woman accused of encouraging her boyfriend to kill himself. Mm. Prosecutors say 20-year-old Michelle Carter sent dozens of text messages to then 18-year-old Conrad Roy in 2014, pressuring him to go through with his suicide. The forensic expert revealed in court today that Roy searched for suicide methods online. Roy was found dead from carbon monoxide poisoning in his truck. Carter is charged with involuntary manslaughter, and she faces 20 years in prison if convicted. Hmm. Two hot air balloons got too close to each other outside of Chicago yesterday, and the result was nothing short of terrifying. Cell phone video shows a gust of wind here blowing one balloon into the other as the group launched. The pilots did manage to get untangled, but it was too late for one of the balloons that hit the ground there. The operator was thrown from the basket, trapped, hanging upside down by his feet. 
The balloon then took off again after he was dumped on the ground. Amazingly, the aircraft came down on its own. A short time later, neither of the folks inside was hurt. The pilot was rushed to the hospital, but he is expected to be okay. Wow. A subway worker did not hold back when a man walked in and tried to rob the restaurant, and her reaction is going viral. Yes, that was Kathy Stafford telling the man to get a job in case you didn't hear it. He probably didn't expect her response, and frankly, neither did she. I don't know what took over me. I guess sometimes I do things I shouldn't do, <laughs> and I speak just whatever comes to my mind, it just comes out. <laughs> well, Stafford even questioned the man and asked if he was responsible for a bunch of other robberies. Stafford's co-worker recorded the encounter and even snapped a few pictures of the suspect. It's the second time in less than a week that someone has robbed that store, so they were understandably frustrated. This time, the man only got away with $13 from the tip jar. Mm. Big talkers, now there is a new rule for the Beach Patrol of Ocean City, Maryland. Don't approach or engage with topless women on the beach. That's as they wait to hear from state officials on just how to officially handle what they officially call female toplessness. Right now, there's no official law against it, although Beach Patrol can write up complaints. Police in Ocean City say they just handle it on a case-by-case -case basis because opinions on this are vastly varied. To me, it's freedom. I mean, it's okay. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but if you feel comfortable with your body and you want to do it, that's fine. If I would ever see that, it, it would turn our, it would turn us away and we would just go elsewhere. Ocean City is currently waiting to hear from the state attorney's, the attorney general's office on what legal rights women may or may not have on the beach there under Maryland law. We aren't the Jetsons. Well, at least not yet, right? Well, it feels like robots can do just about anything and everything to make our lives easier. Do you ever fear they'll get so good, so advanced, they may one day replace you, at least at work? There's a new website called WillRobotsTakeMyJob.com <laughs> and enter at your own risk. Two technologists say they've developed a website that can predict the future and uh, yours. They use stats from a study which predicts that 47% of jobs would be run by robots by 2033 and then combine that with numbers from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. So punch in your job on their site and wait for it. So who's doomed, as they say there? Cashiers. There's a 97% risk with that job. Jobs involving cars, truck drivers, taxis. Thanks to those self-driving vehicles, you too could be doomed. In case anyone here in the studio is worried, our <laughs> risk is just 10%. <laughs> Finally, it's a bombshell scenario that led one pretty angry newlywed to write into an advice column. So here's a scenario. Your best man proposes to his girlfriend during your wedding ceremony. The new bride in this very twisted ordeal writes <laughs> into Dear Prudence on Slate.com explaining how their best man, her husband's best friend, completely stole their moment. Mm -hmm. That best man, referred to only as John, was also the officiant of their wedding. Mike in hand, during the vows, he proposes to his girlfriend, Jane, Ooh. whom he also announces is pregnant. Ah. Everyone cheers, people cry, the videographer records the moment. So the bride asks Prudence, do you think John's behavior warrants the end of a long-term friendship, or are we angry over nothing? Prudence's answer, I think it merits a fight in between getting over it and never speaking to John again. There's a happy medium of having a difficult conversation with a longtime friend who did something selfish and self-absorbed on your wedding day. The story is so <laughs> detailed yeah. and wild. Wow. You have to go to my Facebook page to read the whole scenario, but uh, wow. Everyone on my Facebook page says, bad, bad idea. Bad yeah. idea. It's a, it's a oh, friendship it. ender. For Don't sure. go there. Yeah. You stole the day and right. the moment. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, it's Alicia, we'll get a follow up on that, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you. All, All right. right, time to get another check on the road. Let's do it. Matt Pelman standing by in the Action News Traffic Center with an update for us. Hey, Matt, interrupt my, us, please. My proposal is yeah. don't hit the road right now unless you <laughs> absolutely have to. Our best man this afternoon is not our good buddy Ben, the Ben Franklin Bridge. He has a crash in the westbound lanes heading into Philadelphia. It's been out here now for about 45 minutes, and they're just letting one lane get by. 
you can imagine this is not doing good things to the traffic on our good buddy Ben. It's a parking lot coming out of the toll plaza in Camden up and over in toward that accident scene on the downside. So coming into Philadelphia, think Betsy Ross, think Walt Whitman. Coming out of Philadelphia into South Jersey, do not think Walt Whitman. That's jammed solid with shore traffic. 95 southbound by the Betsy Ross Bridge. Still have a crash there. There's one on the boulevard northbound at Masher. Broken down vehicle on Lincoln Drive. Southbound near Wissahickon. As you look at the big picture, you get a sense of the kind of afternoon we're having with an awful lot of red on the map. Also having issues in Chester County. There was a crash on 202 southbound near Paoli Pike. That's still out there. That had 100 southbound all jammed. Then there was an accident here. 100 southbound near Boot Road. All lanes now shut down. Head for Pottstown Pike or even 352 instead. But better news in Delaware. No construction this afternoon on 495. So I give you something. We'll check it again, Brian and Monica, in the 5 o'clock hour. A glimmer of hope. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Meteorologist Cecily Tynes standing by with that exclusive AccuWeather 7 forecast for your weekend. Coming up next. All right, Friday, we made it to the weekend. Meteorologist yes. Cecily Tynes joining us now with the details on what we can expect. Right. Heat, heat, and more heat. Yeah. But tonight is certainly a beautiful yeah. night. Storm Tracker 6 live double scan showing that we are dry out there. We got rid of the rain. We got rid of the clouds. And now we have some seasonably warm temperatures. Right now, 82 degrees in Philadelphia. The average high for this time of the year is 81. So what's one degree between friends? Allentown and Reading currently 81. Wilmington 82. And Cape May pretty nice getting that westerly winds. That land breeze, not a sea breeze, 78 in that ocean temperature. That will feel good this weekend, 63 degrees. So satellite and radar showing we're in between systems right now. We had low pressure off the coast that tossed some clouds our way yesterday. That's moved on. There is another system, a weak pressure, kind of upper level low. That'll be pulling through early tomorrow morning. But between the two, we have a beautiful Friday night. Future tracker showing tomorrow morning, though, that system will be cutting up to the north. So that means lots of clouds for most of us. Northern Lehigh Valley and the Poconos could get some early morning showers, perhaps even a rumble of thunder. 58 degrees in the Poconos, big race weekend in the Poconos. But this system keeps moving along. High pressure gets established, and that means by the afternoon, plenty of sunshine, temperatures up in the to the 80s and then on Sunday is when we have this building heat. This is typical. We've got this high pressure heat pump sitting off the east coast. We've got the clockwise winds around that. So that pumps winds out of the southwest. Increasingly hot and humid Sunday, Monday and Tuesday and actually the heat index on Tuesday likely will make it feel like 100 and we're chasing records Sunday forecasting a high of 94 degrees just one degree shy of the record high so back in 1986 Monday forecasting a high of 97 tying that record high set two years ago and Tuesday looks like this likely will be the peak of the heat 96 degrees we hit that we break the record high of 95 set back in 1956 so a great place to be this weekend down at the shore, it'll be beautiful tomorrow. Mixture of sun and clouds, a high of 78 degrees on Sunday. Plenty of sunshine and very nice with a high of 81. Race weekend, the Poconos again tomorrow morning early could have a thunder shower. Otherwise, it's partly sunny. 78 degrees looks dry for the big race on Sunday. Sunny and warm with a high of 84. So the exclusive AccuWeather 70 forecast tomorrow warmer than today, but the dew point still generally in the 50s. So not oppressive with a high of 80. Six degrees, partly sunny skies. Sunday, though, great day to find some water to cool off. It'll be hot, more humid, with a high of 94 degrees. Monday, record time heat of 95. And Tuesday, the peak of the heat wave, 96 degrees. You factor in the dew points in the upper 60s. It'll feel like 100. And then it looks like we have a backdoor front moving through. If it moves through on Wednesday, that'll be the end of the heat wave with the possibility of some thunderstorms. 86. Thursday, we drop to 82. And Friday, humid with some scattered thunderstorms with a high of 84 degrees so definitely do want to be careful in this heat i think that we should have the broadcast for my pool let's do on it tuesday that would get big i've been ratings. saying it every time we have a heat wave that's what i say so we got to work I'm on in. our bosses they might go for that i'll box. show up there this weekend <laughs> <laughs> come on over all Thank right you. freebie friday coming up next free pets free taco bell we got it all come stay with us okay. 
It is Freebie Friday. We made it. And we start with a free cup of coffee as you head into the weekend. Tomorrow from 9 to noon, Stripped Juice Fishtown is giving out free pour-over coffee to celebrate its new coffee program. Go get one to start your day. To celebrate the Golden State Warriors NBA Finals win, Taco Bell is giving each customer a free Doritos Locos Taco. This is happening Tuesday from 2 to 6. Considering a new summer look every Friday, in June from 4 to 8 p.m., Ulta is having a hair happy hour where they'll give new customers a summer style for free. This Sunday, Michael's stores are hosting a free slime craft event. Kids three and up can customize their own slime creation. You know they love it. It's happening from 1 to 3. Head to a Tivana store tomorrow and get a free Beach Bellini iced tea. It's all part of National Iced Tea Day. That's happening tomorrow from open to 2 p.m. And finally, if you've been thinking of expanding your family from now through Sunday, you can bring home a furry friend for free. Act Philly says it is at capacity, so it's waiving adoption fees. They really, really want these guys and gals to find good homes. Again, this is going on through Sunday. You should know if you are adopting a dog in Philadelphia, you may have to pay a $16 licensing fee. And if you choose a cat, bring your own carrier or you will have to pay $5 to get a cardboard one to take your little friend home. We have details right now on 6abc.com. All right. Good stuff, Alicia. Thank you. And finally, here at 4 o'clock today, an Australian puppy who flunked out of the police dog academy for, frankly, the most adorable reason has a fancy new job. This is Gavel. In April of last year, a tiny German Shepherd was recruited to be a member of the Queensland Dog Squad. Well, based on his family bloodline, officers had high hopes for this 10-week-old pup, but it wasn't meant to be. Turns out Gavel was just too nice for the force, more interested in snuggling than sniffing out criminals. Fortunately, that polite puppy seems to have failed up. After being kicked out of the academy, Gavel was promoted to the role of vice regal dog at <laughs> Queensland's government house. He now spends his days welcoming guests, wearing spiffy outfits, and relaxing with the governor and his family. Not a bad gig. He has the last laugh or bark. <laughs> God, it looks happy, oh, too. I love it. And that'll do it for Action News at 4 today. Now for Monica Malpass, Shari Williams, Alicia Vitarelli, Adam Joseph, Cecily Tynan, I'm Brian Taft. Hope you'll join me along with Shari, Adam, and Deuces Rogers tonight and every night for a full hour of Action News at 10 on PHL 17. The first Action News continues next at 5 with a deadly shooting investigation in Hunting Park. Also, the new information from officials after a man was shot and killed following a struggle with police. Plus, the fallout continues one day after James Comey's blockbuster testimony on Capitol Hill, how legal experts are ready into, uh, into what Comey had to say, what they're reading into it, and Trump's response since then. Those stories and more coming your way next at 5.